Hi there, it's Dr. Daniel from St. Jude's Clinic here in Sydney, and I thought what we'll do today is actually go through an x-ray presentation as to how to mark the findings of cob angles and the center line in an x-ray which has got scoliosis. And as you can see here in this particular x-ray, I'll point out a few key features, but there is an S-shaped scoliosis where the curve itself goes from the bottom lumbar spine, and including the thoracic spine, in, up to the thoracic spine in here. There's the heart there. Um, the orientation is that this is the left side of the person and this is the right, so you're actually looking at this spine from behind. You'll also see that the pelvis itself in here, which is shaped by these crests on either side, and the sacrum here at this particular level here are uneven. So you'll see that there's actually a 10 millimeter left short leg, whereas if we just ex take a look at this particular uh, photo in here, you'll see how the scale here is on your right hand side and <clears throat> this particular uh, femoral head is higher than this particular femoral head in here. Consequently the sacrum itself tilts down on the left hand side. Um, there may be examples where this can actually create the scoliosis but in this particular situation in here this lady's spine will level out without actually having to introduce a heel lift um, into the left shoe or a sole lift into the left shoe which has been measured at 10 millimeters. So what we'll do is we'll actually go through as to how we create these angles and what are some of the key features as well. So just looking at the skin here, which is this white density here, you'll see how that there's a waste on this right-hand side in here and it's not on the left-hand side there as well. So that will give you a bit of an idea as to what type of spine this looks like. <clears throat> All right, so what we do is we actually pick the vertebra that's most inclined from the bottom and that happens to be this vertebra here. It's not that one above, that's not as tilted as this one is here, nor is it that one just in there. So what we have here is an L5, 4, 3 vertebra here, 2, 1, thoracic number 12, which is seen by the ribs there, and then 11, and then 10. So we're going to identify all of the vertebra, and that's the 10th thoracic, 9, 8, 7, and 6 thoracic, just in there as well. So we've picked number 6, number 10 and also number 3 here as the vertebra um, to use with regards to measuring the cob angle. Now the cob angle basically states this, you go from the bottom of the most inclined vertebra to the top of the most inclined vertebra in the opposite direction. So we've picked here 3 and 10. We can actually measure from the horizontal how much 3 is tilted, that's at 21 degrees. We can measure here how much 10 has tilted from the horizontal, which is that area there, by putting a line in on the end plate. Now the end plate is basically this particular area in here. Okay, You can see that that end plate there is not as tilted as this one is in here. So this 10th vertebral end plate measures 30 degrees here. That's the angle there that I'm measuring. And that's the angle there that I'm measuring as well. It's just on that inside just in there. So both of those vertebral end plates measure 33 degrees. Sometimes you'll find in a spine that the bottom end plate of this scoliosis, which goes from the bottom of the bottom to the top of the top, that's that top of number six in there. We didn't go to the bottom of number six, we went to the top of the top. So from the bottom of the bottom to the top of the top will give us a 51 degree curvature um, here as our cob angle. So we'll just basically put this cob up in here at 51 and we can actually just show you how that particular area there um, is also the same as the bottom area because we've actually got end plates that are the same. So the top of the top here to the bottom of the bottom is actually not a 53 degree curve, it's a 51 degree curve. So we need to actually make an amendment on that as well unless we're actually looking at something which might be more inclined. So if I just drag this particular line down and we just see, yeah, now that line is, that vertebral end plate is not as inclined. That's more the incline there. So I'm going to delete that and actually just leave, leave that one there out of the equation altogether. So we'll actually change this area in here and we'll put a cob angle of 51 degrees. And just give it a bit of a background there as well. 
and essentially what we've done here is we've measured both the bottom angle and the top angle and incidentally we want to be able to just give you an idea as this center of gravity line which is this line in here and this line in here basically goes through this bottom part of the sacrum. There's a bone just in there called the tubicle and we're actually taking the vertical line which we can get from this line here. So we superimpose this line on that line to get our vertical. And if we can just put that back in over that tubicle. Here's the tubicle just to show you where it is. There's the tubicle there. That's called the S2 tubicle. That's the one just in there. There's the two in there, and we're going to place the center of gravity, which goes through this S2 tubicle, and we'll actually see now how far deviated this particular line is. <clears throat> I can just extend it again, just going up. How far it was from the T1 spinous process, and this is the spinous process. It's the dinosaur bump that you can place your fingers on at the back of your neck, and there it is there. So you'll actually see that this is actually, this spine has tilted 25 millimeters to the left. So not only does it have a scoliosis, but the person's head is actually off left of center as well. So I hope that's informative. This is Dr. Daniel from St. Jude's Clinic, and this is the accurate way to measure scoliosis. You'll get varying levels of degrees recorded by different practitioners, but you have to remember that you pick the vertebra that are most inclined. You also go from the bottom of the bottom to the top of the top, and that's the jingle there to help you to remember how you actually record the accurate Cobb angle measurements in there. And so we've corrected ours to a 51 there and a 51 there, and we got 51 on both of them by adding 21 to the top one, which was 30, and we went from the bottom one to the top one there, which was also 30 plus 21, which gave us 51 degrees. Um, so that's a very accurate way of measuring Cobb angles uh, in the spine as well. And just to be sure, I can move that line up here. I can use a protractor, which goes from this line here to this line in here. And there you have Joseph Cobb's angle that is um, easily measured via a protractor. And we've, we've created the other additional measurements as well to help you understand that some particular habits are going to have an effect on some particular levels of the spine. And that's why we just added those extra measurements as well to help you understand that there are habit-driven health changes which can influence all of these angles. So this, this one up in here is called the apical angle. This one's called the pivot angle. And this one's called the terminal angle just down in here. And we look forward to seeing you um, and helping you with your scoliosis. So give us a call on 02-944-00-995. That's in Sydney, Australia. 02-944-00-995. Have a great day.